Hello everyone and welcome to the Mousy Makes podcast. Uh, just in case you're new here and haven't met me before, I'm Helen and I live in Durham in the northeast of England. Uh, if you're not new here, you're the first thing you'll notice is that I'm sitting somewhere different. Uh, the main reason is that it, my craft room at the moment is so bright and sunny that my camera just can't cope with the light and it's just making the videos very flickery. So I've done a few tests here and I think it's going to be a bit better today. Uh, and yeah, so this is my piano. I'm not about to give you a recital, although uh, you will have heard me play it lots of times if you've listened to my podcasts before. And I do work part time as a piano teacher. So that's yeah. Uh, right, okay then. So this is normally a place where I'm showing you the things that I've been making and a few other things that I do as well. But today is one of those podcasts where I've just been reflecting on something and I thought I would share with you, um, you know, just what I've been thinking about. And really, really, it's kind of going to tell you a little bit more about me. And so I hope you're going to enjoy listening. And while I'm busy chatting, I'm just going to show you a few videos of me quietly, uh, I don't know, doing stuff, painting and drawing and things, uh, just, just while I chat. Okay, so I think I've always been considered as a quiet person. Um, I'm the complete opposite to someone who's the life and soul of the party. <laughs> or any social gathering, and I've always melted happily into the background. Uh, I like nothing better than a good session of people watching, and I'm never drawn to meaningless small talk or talking just for the sake of it. As a child, I didn't have a busy social life, and I rarely played in large groups of children. Uh, in the school playground, I would mostly just play with one friend at a time, and our games usually took us into make-believe worlds with stories that continued for days at a time. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> I remember one particular story game that I loved that involved the sun and the moon fairies. Uh, in, in the classroom, uh, I really disliked group work where we were expected to process ideas instantly rather than being given time to think them over. I was usually the one who volunteered to write everyone else's ideas down. And in fact, I continued that through my career, really, in all the teacher training sessions I was attended. I was usually the one who was writing on the uh, you know, on the big piece of paper that you were given quite often in a group work. Um, as my school years went by, I felt less and less inclined to participate in lessons where verbal contributions were expected. This happened partly because I became aware of a stigma of being attached to being more knowledgeable than some of the others, being called a swat or simply being ridiculed for knowing things. I think I found it easier just to keep my knowledge and my thoughts to myself, where no one would be able to comment or make fun of me. I don't suppose any of my teachers really understood why I was so quiet in lessons. From early on, I just loved to put all of my thoughts down on paper in notebooks or diaries, and I've never stopped doing that. However, I was never a shy child. I wasn't afraid of meeting new people or joining in with social occasions. It's just that I didn't feel the need to chat away to people, and I enjoyed the social occasions as long as I didn't have to stay too long. It wasn't until many years later, when I started reflecting more on the characteristics of my personality, that I found the word introvert described me perfectly. I sometimes wonder now if it would have helped family, friends and colleagues to understand me better if I'd been able to express these thoughts about myself out loud. I remember as a teacher once being asked by my head why I didn't contribute more to staff meetings. I remember telling him that my ideas and opinions were all there in my head, but that something prevented me from verbalising them. It wasn't really that I was afraid of speaking up in front of other people. As a teacher, you're a bit like an actor putting across the persona of a confident person who has everything in hand, and I was good at doing that. But now that I've thought about it a bit more, and with the benefit of hindsight, I can understand that my behaviour was related to my introverted characteristics where I feel the need for more processing time before I can put my thoughts into words. 
The dictionary definition that I found of introvert is a person interested mainly in his or her own inner states and processes rather than the outside world, loosely a shy or reflective person. I would argue that neither of these definitions is wholly accurate. I don't think that an introvert lacks an interest in the outside world, but just spends more of their time looking inward than people of a more extrovert nature. And the second definition that alludes to an introvert being shy is a very common misconception. I read somewhere that shyness is an emotion, whereas introversion is a personality trait. Some, but not all, introverts are shy or suffer from social anxiety, but most introverts, like me, are perfectly friendly people who value a small number of deeper friendships as opposed to having a wide social circle. I wish that I'd fully appreciated years ago what it is to be an introvert. I would have understood myself better and been able to explain my behaviour better to those who are close to me. I remember as a student going to parties, but then partway through the evening, knowing that I no longer wanted to be there. My brain had just had enough and I was drained of the energy required to sustain all that stimulation. But at the time, I could never explain properly why I wanted to leave the party. I think it's very true that once you understand yourself properly, there's a much greater chance of feeling happy and content with life, or at least having an explanation for why you feel or behave in a particular way. So I prefer this definition of introvert. Someone who prefers calm, minimally stimulating environments. They tend to feel drained after socialising and regain energy by spending time alone. Our society generally sees an extrovert personality as something to aspire to. Introverted people are often told that they need to come out of their shell. I've grown up with the distinct impression that being a quiet person is a bit frowned upon and that to be really successful you need to be an extrovert. There are, of course, many examples of successful introverts from the past and present, but I'm not going to spend time on those today. Of course, the introvert-extrovert personality lies on a scale with ambivert at the centre and our degree of introversion may not stay the same as the years go by. We may become more or less introverted. I definitely think that this pandemic has caused me, along with many others probably, to become more introverted because I've had more time to reflect on myself and think about what's important to me and what I really need in order to live a happy life. Being a crafter definitely suits my introverted nature. When I'm busy, I often have nothing but my own thoughts going round in my head and this gives me much needed processing time as well as relaxation. When crafting alongside other crafters, I never feel compelled to chat all the time. It's quite acceptable to sit and make things in companionable silence. Of course, I do like a good chat sometimes but in a group of people, I'm much more likely to be enjoying listening to all the chat. So to finish, here's my list of how to be a happy introvert. Have a quiet space of your own where you can wind down and retreat into your own mind and think. Give yourself permission to remain quiet or sit in companionable silence. Engage fully in hobbies and interests and just go with the flow. Connect with family and friends who value you, despite your quirks, and make sure they understand that sometimes you'll just stay at home. Find opportunities for meaningful conversation. And finally, be independent. Trust your own inner resources rather than simply following the crowd. So... I hope you found that interesting or helpful, whether you know that you're an introvert and it helps you to understand yourself a bit better or you just know other people who have that kind of personality and you can help to understand them. So after all that deep thinking, (laughs) a bit of light relief, I think, (laughs) we're going to go into the kitchen. I'm going to make uh, something today that is, has, uh, oh, it's been around for centuries, this recipe. Uh, Apparently, Uh, It's something that was made in Roman times and there's even examples of it in ancient Egypt. 
and that is recipes that are made using bread and specifically stale bread and it's actually something that's been used in recipes all around the world in all different kinds of cultures and I think it really stemmed basically from um, the need to not waste food so got your stale bread let's do something with it so you can make it uh, edible <laughs> oh. so um, the, I had never come across uh, bread pudding um, until I met my husband so the recipe I'm going to use today is from my mother-in-law. Uh, when I was a child, we did have recipes using bread, but my mum always made bread and butter pudding, which is different. Still in the same group of bread recipes, but bread and butter pudding is where you slice your old bread and butter it, and then you layer it in a dish with often sugar and dried fruit, and then you pour over it um, a mixture of egg and milk and then bake it in the oven. So that makes an absolutely delicious, one of my favourite puddings. Um, but uh, bread pudding is, is not the same as that because you have the bread in chunks to start off with and, um, and then yeah, you soak the bread and then you add other things to it. And I mean, the recipe apparently that they used in Roman times used bread, some fat, some dried fruit, and maybe a sweetener and some milk and really the recipe I'm using today is not it doesn't have that many more things apart from those basic ones so um, anyway it is really easy to make and uh, it helps you to use up any bread if you've got some old bread and it just is really really nice really so maybe you'll give it a try if you don't already make it uh, but here we go let's go into the kitchen to uh, finish there for today and uh, I think it's going to be maybe a little bit shorter than usual this one but uh, anyway I'll be back again next week with probably more making updating you on on all of my current makes and projects 
but until then, um, thank you so much for watching, spending your time with me. And I hope that you will take care, stay safe and keep busy. And I'll see you again soon. Okay then, bye.